Yeah, it's just been so long since I've been able to do digital art. I just kind of had to convert over completely to traditional. Yeah, so now I can help you learn some things. And now it's live. Yay! So this is just going to be just a quick tutorial thing and going through how I do different things on site. And, <laughs> and also... Forgive Ellie. Can... She's a, a hog for attention. <laughs> yeah, so sorry about that. Just helping someone learn some more digital things. So yeah, I have this here for the colors. So that's my reference. Oh my god, it's so pixelated. Yeah, it's because I'm zoomed in at this is 100%, so that's how it looks like 100% the full size. Yeah. And then here is like I zoom in and so you can see the percentage changes, so that's when I zoom in using a lot. I do that a lot because I want to keep things in shape. So since I'm going to be doing this kicker, I'm going to be starting with my circle. And I learned how to do circles after a long time. It's just you got to do like a short stroke over the other stroke and then you make a circle. <laughs> That's it what I like to do. Face me time. And another thing is that you can figure out what direction you want the face turn. Since, however, I have a habit of drawing from the perspective from as the character is looking to the left uh, instead of the right. It's like that's kind of my personal habit. I, keep, I have issues drawing it the other way. So I'm going to have her be looking in this direction. Okay? So she's going to mm -hmm. be looking this way. Because that's just personal preference and it's a little bit easier for me. So, so she's a girl. Got to draw more curved shapes because guys are different. It's like guys can be kind of like more bulky shapes or sometimes if they're like the beachy type, then you can have like more pointy feminine shapes. But it's like for guys, sometimes they got like this kind of jaw. So you can see how different that is yeah. compared to a girl. So that's just a quick thing when you're drawing heads and stuff, is that just... Also, keep in mind, she difference. does have the body of a seven-year-old, because that's actually mentally how old she is. She's actually around 700 years old, because she's a goddess. Okay. So she's on the smaller side. Just a little bit, yeah. She's like my height, because <laughs> I'm like 5'2", so I'm short. I don't think a seven-year-old would really be 5'2". Okay, um, so Four-ish something. Try not to make this pointy because that's a bad habit of mine is making ears a little pointy because of my dragon characters. <laughs> Yay! Anyways, so you, you normally put the ear around here and then what you do for to help keep everything in proportion, you draw a line to the chin from the top of the head. That's your center line and then from here to here is where you draw your eye line. So when the jaw connects with the circle is where the eye line normally is. And that's also where the ear tends to be. It's like the middle of the ear is to here too. Yeah, I try to avoid ears because I can never get them right. Yeah, to me, I learned how to do ears out of lots of practice and repetition. So see, and to me, the ear, inner ear, is like it's an S. And then you draw this little thing here and that's an ear. That's it. Very simplified. Kind of looks like a butterfly to me. <laughs> it's like a little butterfly in an ear. <laughs> or the start of a flower or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird sometimes, but yeah. So, yeah. When I'm doing eyes, it's like normally it's like eyebrow might be around here, but I don't really, I can't really tell from the reference if she has her eyebrows. Actually, it's back then, I didn't do eyebrows because. Yeah, that means. Actually, I don't know why. So I'm going to so, do just the eyes for now. And you want to do is try to keep the lines, even though it's curved in a curved perspective, you try to keep everything to stick in line with each other. Because it's like if the bottom of the eye is here, you got to make sure that the bottom of the eye over here is touching this line, because that's your eye line. Mm -hmm. So it keeps everything proportionate. And here's the thing your eye curves like this and so this actually helps you figure out the position for your nose like if I follow it her nose would be about here roughly and that's where her nose would be yeah I'm very weird because I've taken a bunch of styles and sort of mushed them together 
Yeah, so that happens a lot. And I understand that. It's like I went through a bunch of different styles before I stepped with one. And so I see that she has one of these feminine eye shapes. So I tried to give her a clamp type style. Like, yeah. um, What's that music? Oh, it's the clock. Uh, Telling me it's one o'clock. <laughs> okay. That's a loud clock. If I turn the light off, it'll stop. Yeah. But I don't want to. Well, just know that uh, this is recording, so this is going to be in the video. <laughs> oh, well. It's recording Everyone you. Everyone knows that it's one o'clock as of this moment. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to see if I can volume that down. I don't know. <laughs> I can't do that. Oh, well. But it's over now, so that's okay. <laughs> it never lasts long. It's oh, something yeah. in case they're tired watching it, and it wakes them up. <laughs> yeah, so anyways. So, yeah. There's the eyes, because I see it's a particular eye And she seems to have this sort of makeup. Actually, it's not makeup. That's her actuals. Oh, wait. Yeah. That's it's actually like her red, skin. <laughs> it's like her skin has a red point, but yeah. I'm like, I don't know how far it goes. It actually, actually, I don't really know. Because it's, like it's covered um, with hair, so I'm like, I don't really know how far this goes. And I'm going to draw a quick little hairline, because it goes to the ear, so that way you can be able to draw the hair a little later. Yeah, I'm kind of obsessed with the whole permanent type makeup thing for some reason. Yeah, it's okay. I have a bit. It's okay. Everyone has different things they like. And so I'm trying to keep it as kind of plain as possible. And with the eyes, I feel like I made the eyes way too big, <laughs> personally. So I'm like, I'm I wasn't going to say anything, I swear. I was just like, nah, those eyes are too big. Gotta do it again. See, this happens sometimes is that you gotta redraw things. So it's like, I'm going to turn the eyes a bit because it's like, that was way too big. Wait, did we announce who we are for the people in the video? Uh, nah. It's like, to me, this is a casual video just for you to reference later, so. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's not going to be on YouTube or anything? It is going to be on YouTube and for later, but it's like, I'm not going to get picky about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a picky person. I'm very casual on things, and I'm like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Today, I'm just like, whatever. And the eye shapes don't match either, so that kind of bugs. No. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, I gotta get the eyes right, or else I'm gonna get annoyed. That's how I am today, so I'm like, I'm gonna just make this look nice, but I want to make sure I don't derp myself today, too much today, so I'm like, trying to make the eye shape match. So. Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I think it is makeup, because... She's in that age where she's wanting to look more mature. So she could have gotten into her mom's makeup, and that's what could have ended up out of it or something. Yeah, because I'm like, it looks like a bit of a geisha makeup style, because she's so pale. So I'm like, it's like I'm thinking like a, she's kind of looks like inspirations from a geisha type of... Look. Well, actually, this Lady Asuka is actually based off of another Lady Asuka from... Um, Magic Knight Rare. And oh, yeah. that's why she has her crystal ball. That's why she's wearing that huge kimono. And um, that's actually why she's pale and has that particular makeup. However, I did change the hairstyle. And her attitude kind of changed over time because she basically she had two father figures. Uh, one she was relatively close to, but he never really had time for her because... Hey, god of the underworld, what you gonna do about it? And then she had another one who kind of sort of died. Sorry, it's my dad popping in, and I'm like, is he gonna start talking? And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I like getting into backstories. Yeah, yeah it's okay. It's just, I'm like, I'm getting interrupted, I'm like, nah, I don't want that to happen. So anyways, I don't know how far back it goes, because... I think it goes all the way up into her hairline, okay. but I'm not sure. Because the hair covers it, so I'm like, I don't know where it goes. So this is just going to be a bit like the under parts of it, though. So, yeah. That's kind of the face. But the paleness, the paleness of her skin yeah. is actually her skin tone. Yeah, it's okay. It's like I know there's pale character figures, and like you see, 
I also do tweaks as I'm drawing. Like I readjust the drawing because mm -hmm. I'm like to make it smaller and more useful looking. You gotta change the shapes because I'm like big eyes is common for when you're a bit more youthful, but you don't need them to be too big. And same with the features is like this jaw shape can be smaller too. So you see that's how I'm kind of doing it and doing neck part the neck part can be a little bit hard if you don't really know where you're going. So like for me, when you get to this part, this is like where the ball shape is. If I kept it there, you kind of bring the neck down like this for me. And then it's either around here or yeah, it's about around here. It comes down. And it depends on how you want to preference it, because I'm like if you want it to be a bit thinner, because thinner is a little bit more feminine, so I kind of push it in a bit more. And then you gotta draw that there's shoulders here, so shoulders go this way. It's like there's a lot of pieces you gotta do, and so I'm like, I'm just drawing the basic part that's gonna help me guide into drawing the finishing piece later. Because I'm like, eh, my mom says, and my dad's like confused on how I draw, and they're like, eh, there's a lot of under parts before you get to the finished part. Mm -hmm. And so you see this line here is actually to help me guide as to where the center of her body is going to be. So it's going to be like around here. So this is like the center part. And because it's a girl, it's like you got to change the shapes a little bit. But it's again, because she's a very youthful character, you don't really need to change too much. So it's like you use this part, and it's going to be very light. Like she might have like a little rose bump because she's just starting into puberty. Yeah, so it's like very small at first, and so it's not going to be something too big. And the thing is, like, when it comes to girls, you got to keep the slenderness. It's different Unless from... Unless it's a chubby girl, like me. Unless it's a chubby girl. <laughs> I'm chubby too, but, yeah, whatever. So, it's like, you got to do different things. And the thing is that, also, there's a lot of curves. Every time you draw girls, there's a lot of curves, and it's also the same with chibis, and that's why JPEG says I draw cute style, because I like to draw things curved. Even if it's something that's meant to be very pointed or scary, I still draw with curves, and that's sometimes just, that's just how I draw. So it's like, you see here, it's like, instead of being straight like that, you curve it down, it's a little more feminine and softer. So, like, when it comes to girls, you got to think a lot of circles. Circles and curves and soft shapes. Because that's just how girls are, I guess. Yeah. And it's like, see, you don't want the arm to be too thick. And so, since I'm also trying to keep her slender, so, yeah. It's like, you got to figure out where the back is. And you kind of curve this way. Again. Yeah, it gets on my sister's nerves, how I curve the back and have them standing in a special position. She's just like, why don't you draw them normally in a normal position? And I'm like, why don't you pose normally for a picture? Poses are something that needs, that everyone has different ways of doing poses. Like, I do a lot of different poses. They're not always going to be natural poses. It's just how I do poses. Yeah. It's like, it's like, to me, it's like, also, this is my problem area. You can guess why. It's a bit awkward to draw. But the other <laughs> thing is that you have to remember where things are when you're drawing, like, legs. It's like, the leg doesn't come from here. That doesn't work. The leg... Unless you're Japanese and you have a natural leg gap. Yeah. It's like, but it's like, it actually comes from here because at this angle, it's like you draw the circles of where the butt's supposed to be. That's where it connects. <laughs> so it's like, you actually got to draw there, because at this particular angle, you actually see this perspective. So I can see here, it's like you're going to see a little bit of emphasis. There's a butt here, but not completely. What a cute little butt. Yep. So it's like, <laughs> again, there's a lot of particular details you got to keep in mind, which it's not always easy at first, but once you get the hang of it, it helps a lot. And then, of course, it's going to be the knees down here. And you try to keep everything about the same level, like the knees. It's like you try to keep that the same level. And then there's like this part to the knee. So it's kind of like a weird bumpy thing, and then it goes down. 
And so because I made the legs like this, it's going to affect the shape of the clothes later too. So you got to keep a lot of things in mind. So it's like there's the center part. Here's a little something I tend to draw is that this is like my stomach area. This is my stomach area. This is where the hips are. And this is where the chest area is. So you see how everything kind of goes together and stays lined up. Yeah. And of course, if you want, you can draw circles here. Because they keep reference of what these are. And uh, whenever you draw anything circular, it's good. Because when you draw clothes, like if I draw a line like this, you got to curve every time there's like something that's a bit pushed out. Because that's depth. So you can see the yeah. curves go with the shape and it makes it pop out more instead of drawing like a straight line. That doesn't show any depth at all. So it's like you got a curve and curve and then small curve and then curve like that. I might actually have to go redraw my skirt now that's on the spectrum. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little time to learn this stuff, but when you get the hang of it, it's actually really nice. So it took me a long time to deal with shapes and I'm still learning how to deal with shapes. And it's like here again, here's another part of the body that I'm not always used to drawing, is that this is the inner part of your elbow. Not every time not everyone draws the inner part of their elbow because that's not always easy. And it's like you also gotta draw a little shape. Normally it's like you do a circle, which is good enough, but it's like the elbow, when you bend it, it's a bit pointed. So it's like you gotta make it a little pointy. And then it's like, yeah, continue, and so it's like the elbow then goes like this, and so this is your part of your forearm, and it goes down like this. And when you meet the hands, which hands are my trouble point, it's a pain in the butt to draw hands. Which, it's the most ironic thing in art, is drawing hands. One of the hardest things ever, even though you're using your hands to draw things. <laughs> And so here's something that helps me with thumbs. You draw this circle, because basically your thumb has like this big round point. So it's like a circle. And then you can kind of... I swear I'm not yawning at you. It's okay. It's just my night meds. Yeah, you take your night meds and like, yeah. But you see how it helps me do the thumb? Having mm -hmm. that circle. And it also shows me where this part of the hand is, because that continues this way. So you see? And so yeah. this is like the big flat part of your hand. And then I've been doing this for some reason. I don't know why it helps me draw fingers. So I do something like this. I do this shape, and then I do this shape, and then space, and then I do this shape, and then I do that shape again. And I do that for each of the fingers. Well, I read this article on Tumblr that says if you can draw cylinders and squares, you can draw fingers, and that might be a part of it because what you're doing, it looks like, is you're drawing individual cylinders and a part of a square. The thing is, is you got to add another layer because this is where the depth comes in. So this is where I add finger depth, and then you do this part, and then finger depth, and then you do this part, and then a little depth. And you see, it adds a three-dimensional part. Because before, I wasn't able to do that. And I'm like, there's this little space between your fingers. You need to draw that sometimes. And so it's like, that's how I got a little bit better with my doing the fingers. So, yeah. Surprising how many different parts of your body is there. And sometimes I cheat, though. There is normally, you know, three little bumps. See like that? It's like these are mm -hmm. the smallest tips of your fingers. And I don't always include them because I'm kind of lazy. I always do just the two. Because I'm like, one of them is so close together, they can be one. But mm -hmm. it's like, for this one, I'm going to do all three because I'm like, I don't want to show that I'm being really lazy today. <laughs> but whatever. It's two in the morning. You got to understand. <laughs> yeah, I understand. So, yeah, so that's a hand. Uh, it's kind of just reference hand. Most likely, I kind of drew this for nothing because you're not going to see this hand. <laughs> <laughs> With the clothing and how it is, you're not going to see the hand. But I'm just showing an example. So it helps to have them there anyways.
Yeah, the, everything her, could be different for when you her do. Her kimono kind of swallows her whole. Yeah. So you see, I'm also kind of tweaking a little bit here because every part of your body curves differently. It's gonna curve and then go over because there's like a little bump for on your shoulder, and then this perspective is a little tricky because you're doing it like this, it's the other side. And sometimes you try, it's like if you try to make it symmetrical, that's only if you're making it flat. But since this is three dimensional, there's obviously pieces that you're not going to see. Like this whole part, you don't see it. But that's why I'm not drawing it on there. Yeah. And then there's the little triangle bit again. But since this is the underside, you can see this part, which is the inner elbow. And then I go back to doing what I was doing earlier. Just adding the curve for the hands and stuff. This one I'm going to do a little differently. Is I'm going to have it pointing outwards because I like to do it this way. And so you see that hand is pointing in this direction. And so it's a bit of an angle. So you're not going to see all the fingers. See? Mm-hmm. So it's like here don't get you don't have to draw the fingers if you have it at a slight angle like that, which comes in handy when you don't want to do extra work <laughs> like I am right now. But yeah. So yeah, so there's everything. All these lines have a purpose, and it helps me keep everything in check. And also you gotta make sure you curve them right because I'm like I'm curving it the wrong way. Like you see, I was doing that, but actually I was supposed to draw it like this. That's how it's supposed to go. Yeah, I'm going to have to call it quits because I'm starting to get a headache because I'm fighting sleep. Okay, then I'll continue this as recording. So you can just like drop out and I'll just keep recording and All right. in the sketch. So I'll just do the sketch and then maybe tomorrow we can do the coloring. All right, thank you. Okay, have a good night, Tamaki. <laughs> night. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Alright then, since I'm solo right now, I'm just going to explain everything as I go. And for some technical things, if you want to know the settings for my airbrush tool, that's the only tool I'm using is the airbrush tool. So it's airbrush tool on size, so you can basically see everything, but if it's too small, then yeah. So airbrush, the size at the moment is like one pix because I like it that way. And the pat density is at 100% because I'm being kind of rough with it. And it's just the beginning sketch, so that's why it's like that right now. And the minimum size is set to 0% because I like the little trails. It's like pencil marks. And if you make the density a bit lighter, it's really like having a pencil and you can get really sketchy with it. I love that. So just a thought. And also the tip is this tip, the fuzzy tip, not the flat tip. Every detail has lots of different things inside. So yeah, so that's how you know. And I'm using just a normal layer, normal opacity, normal mode, and nothing special, just sketching it out. Alright then, so going back to doing the body, as you can see I got all the body proportions done. I got the body shape going on, and since she's useful, that's why things are small and has a particular look. I'm going to then make another layer, and this is going to be where I'm going to get add a lot more details. Remember, this technically isn't just the sketch, it is the rough sketch. Rough sketch, and I can't spell it, eh? so sorry about that. So this is the rough sketch. It's going to be our base. It's going to be what we add onto. So this is just your guideline. And then this is going to be a refined sketch. And for the refined sketch, I'm going to color her in blue. So that way I can be able to tell the difference. And so the hairstyle, if you refer to this picture here, which is my reference, is a bit peculiar. So her hair is like this, like that, and then it goes like that. And she has the buns here, and then it's long all the way down. So we're going to be doing that now. So, for me, I'm going to add a little hairline, which is going to be this. And so, it's going to go like that. Since there are buns, I'm going to add a little bit of a pinch here. 
and sort of kind of make the bun show its shape and kind of just stand out a little bit. And you can add hairlines. I'm just doing this for the sake of just adding it. And then I'm going to continue it over here. So the hair is kind of like that. It's a little bit hard to see. So, yeah. And then it's going to go down like this. So that's how this particular hairstyle is going. And so you do this and curves over here. And don't be afraid to kind of just bring back the face. Which, again, anytime you're sketching, you can always tweak it to how you like it. And so I'm doing it like this, curve out, curve it in. I'm going to change where the chin is so that way it matches the face better. And move the mouth a little lower, making her smile a little bit, but that's okay. A little smile doesn't hurt. I'm going to add the nose again. This is just my nose shadow, so it's, this is the, the shadow on the nose. It's not the main bridge of the nose. Like, the bridge of the nose is like here, so that's just a small detail. And then the eye here, which you're not going to really see the red because of the hair, but I'll try to make sure you kind of see it over here. So that way it's like you know there's something there. Otherwise, you're never going to know something's there. And okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to add the irises as well. So I'm going to do this. And because she's useful looking, even though she's a goddess. I'm going to make sure the eyes are pretty big, add the slight shine notice, and add the circle, which is going to be her pupil. And so yeah. The thing with eyes is that you got to keep the proportions a bit more correct, because meh, it's all aesthetics and how things look and whatnot. So yeah, trying to keep the pupils like Pointing in the same direction and so forth isn't always that easy. Like for instance, the size here is messed up and I made it too small. And so I actually gotta make it a bit bigger because the pupil on the other one is a bit bigger. And so there we go. Gonna temporary shade in the pupil, so it's gonna be like this. So this is a quick shade in of the pupils. And if you want to add a mini shine, just go to the eraser and do that. Adds a little extra shine to your pupils. This is just for the sketch though, so I'm getting details for no reason. But that's how I am. Alright then. So then we go back to doing the ear. Not, not with the eraser tool. And if the ear seals a little bit big, so it's like I can shrink it down if I want, because I'm still in the sketching stage. And so to add a little more shape here for the hair, I'm going to add this. And then I can do that. Nope, that's too big. Got to make sure you keep everything kind of leveled and it clicks together. So kind of like that. Make the eraser bigger so it's easier for me to erase faster. And there we go. And then the next part is trying to keep these hair buttons the same size. I don't know why I was about to say size. Anyways, so there we go. And then we're going to bring the hair out like this. Nice and straight down. And there we go. That's the hairline. And so we got the hair done. And now we're going to work on doing the kimono. And here's a little note. Is that the, it's very important to know the direction of your kimono. And here's a small reference I got for that. It's written here. Somewhere. I know I have it in here. Because I use it for reference before. And it came in handy whenever you do kimonos. This is something I got on uh, Demon Art Relief. It's a very helpful reference. For some reason it's not popping up. Uh, hold on. I'll put it into the other side so that we yeah, don't see my millions of cheapies. <laughs> Chibis for no reason. So yeah, just a quick quick because I'm like, I want to show you this important reference and it came in handy later on for when I was drawing a kimono. I think it's in the other thing. 
Ah, I can't find it for some reason today. That's weird. Here we go. So this is by Elru and it's from DeviantArt. So this is my reference for drawing a kimono and it shows you a lot of important things when you're drawing a kimono because there's many pieces to a kimono. And you can customize them too. And so you can see every part has a lot of different things to it. And one of the most important things is the this part here. This part here is wrapped to the right. You have to make sure you wrap it to the right because as it says here, only dead people have their kimono wrapped to the left. And as you can see, there's a lot of different pieces here. Like there's double layers on the color because there's an inner second kimono. And then as you can see, the kimono has a weird shape. It's like, it's a long fabric here and then it goes like this. And then there's area for the hand. So you can see it's not completely like this, like this is a whole cut, or else it'd have this shape to it. Instead, it's actually kind of angled. And I know this is true because my mom happens to have a kimono. So yeah, just some notes there to learn that there's a lot of different parts to a kimono. This is a great reference, and you can look for it. Look for Elu, or how to draw a kimono for dummies. Just type that in, and it should pop up on DeviantArt. All right, then back to the character. And okay, so we're gonna work on the kimono. She does have an undershirt, but I'm gonna do a slight tweak so it's a secondary color kimono. So that way you have the two layers. So here's something that I was explaining a little earlier is keeping to the curves of the body. It's a little tricky sometimes. And so what you want to do is, this is going to be a small part. You can go like this. And since this is the small inner part, a little bit here, that's a fold. Bring that down so you have it for later. And whoops. And then point it like that. And there you go. This is for the inner kimono because there's a small, tiny inner kimono. And then there's the main big kimono piece strip. And so add this and then we're going to follow this this way. And I'm not making it as severe as I probably should. So yeah, there we go. And so here we go. We're going to follow the shape of the body. It's going to go over and then it's going to sort of go boop. And then it's going to go this way. And the belt, by the way, covers the entire stomach normally. So I'm going to sketch that in. And here's the obi. So the obi is going to cover the entire stomach. Or most of the stomach. So you're going to put that right there. Now add the other part is the little obi belt which is I think it's called an obi jime I don't remember it right away so sorry for my slowness but yeah so I'm gonna reshape this again because I didn't like how that went so there we go so again we're gonna make some slight references that there's shape here but we're not gonna make it too obvious or else it'll detract from the looks of it and so we're going to finish this here. We're going to bring a line all the way across. We're going to bring it up. We're going to put a little triangle. And we're going to bring this all the way down. But not completely because I keep forgetting the shape. And so we're going to also curve it slightly to the body shape. There. And so you can... Add this part, which this is a, a little fold under the kimono. So there's little fold bits of clothing. Drawing clothing folds is not my forte, so that's why I'm kind of just trying to keep it there. This, even though it's like little C's, little C's and V's and lines, it adds the effect that the clothing is overlapping and folding here. 
So just a little note there. So we're going to do this part and you can add the little fold again. So it's like, you know, the clothing's overlapping. And then sort of just bring it gently like that. And she's a little flat just because she's youthful looking. So we're going to have it like that. And then we're going to continue the kimono shape. Sort of point that out a little and then drop it down. And then go over here, which I'm going to edit this a little bit. So the lines are a little bit more consistent. And so we're going to take this and make it straight. I'm going to do a line a little here. I'm going to drop it down. Mm, I made this a little too early. So I'm going to put readjust it to fit a bit better. Because I don't want it to look too large. And so we're going to have it go like that. And don't be afraid to draw lines to show the length of the kimono. There. Lines help. So there we go. Now there's a little detail that's little obibo that has a small, what I believe is a bell on it. I'm not sure. So yeah. I'll probably ask about it tomorrow when we do the coloring. So I'm going to erase this bit. I'm going to erase a little bit here. And a little bit here. I'm going to draw a little obi bell slash obi bow and put it this way. And so drawing a bow is simple. It's going to take this kind of shape, tuck it, add some stress points. If you want, you can add that extra ribbon part. Bring it like this. Put a little bit here because I'm gonna it's like it looks like a bell to me so I'm gonna make it look like a bell. Okay. And then tuck it there and then you can add a little bump to it if you want to. And do that. And there we go. And then we're gonna do this for a little small ribbon trail. And that's about it. That's it for the little ribbon part. And I didn't do that part right. I don't know why I didn't, but whatever. So there we go. There's the little obi bow. It's a small detail, but it adds more aesthetic feelings. And for the obi, you can add some stress lines or clothing stress lines. So you can add like a little bit of this show that it's tighter on the body so that way and you can add like little full bumps here to show that it's pressing against the little body and there we go see adds more depth every little detail adds a little more depth like that here adds a bit of depth and this here which I'm going to fix this actually Erase this line and sort of add it around here. And this little bit here is going to add just a tiny bit of depth to the character's body shape. And you can add a few more of these lines here because this is kind of a stress point on the body. That's just for my particular style though, so you don't, you can do your own thing, you can figure anything out. But this is just like basic ideas. And so another thing is like here's tightness on the body. You can put a little bit of stress lines where the OB is. And I'm going to add, curve this a little bit inwards so that way it looks like the OB is going around. You want to make sure everything is on top like it's supposed to, layer wise. So here we go with the kimono and it's going to continue for this particular care past the hands and it's going to have the illusion of getting longer and bigger. So it's going to fold here and go like this. I might keep the finger showing just for the sake of it. It goes like this. 
It's, been, it's not easy because I'm not used to drawing a kimono with this particular shape at the moment. So, yeah. Everyone's doing something different. So, let me erase this bit because I make it want to show the shape and I don't want it to stand out too much. There we go. So that's a little bit of the kimono part that you saw earlier. I don't know all the parts, so sorry. I can't be accurate with everything, so I'm going to go do this again. Just try to keep this part straighter. And since this is a different angle, I'm going to have it go like this. And this is going to show that little elongated piece. Of the kimono a lot more definitively than the other one. So, like that. And again, don't forget to put like small little fabric parts to show more depth because fabrics fold and change and etc. So, I'm going to actually make this a bit more like here. Okay then. I'm also going to change this here because I want to angle it. And so it like flaps over itself. And then we go like this. Follow the shapes that I already preset with the pie. Like for instance, this isn't completely accurate because the hand is over here. So I'm going to change this so the lines actually follow the way, the way the arm is moving under here. So this is how it's supposed to look. So there we go. More accurate. Like that. And then you have the hand there. And because the fabric goes like this, sort of, you can have it go like that. It's going to go straight like that. I'm going to erase this part for where the hand is going to be. You don't only need to erase the parts where the digits are. Okay. Going on to the next part of the kimono. Because we did these parts already. We're going to do that line you saw earlier. And so the kimono, because the fabric's over here, I'm going to have a line going like this. And so the line's coming from here, it's going down here. Everyone has their own ways of drawing it, so this is just how I want to do it. And then I'm going to continue this part here, and the fabric is going to split a little bit, because there's two layers of fabric. This one that's going this way, and it goes like that. And then this one going this way, and it goes like that. And so because it's a bit of a wider shape kimono, it's going to cover most of the leg shape. And so I'm going to just curve it a little bit up here. Can add a little flap there. That way it has a bit more shape. I'm going to do that over here as well. I'm going to bring the kimono this way. I'm going to try to make it as straight as I possibly can because kimonos are very smooth, straight, and fine. So we're going to follow the curve this way, it's going to curve up like that because it's a long elongated kimono. And so there we go. You can have the option of continuing this part like all the way down here like that. That is optional if you want to do that for aesthetic reasons. You don't need it, but again, it's the option is there. And I'm making sure I curve this correctly. Oops, go to curve. Okay. So remove that. Fix this, and there we go. Alright then. No, no, is that the inner part of our kimono is black. So the only time there's going to be some black is it right here. So, just a small note. And this part 
is going to be white, but I might change some of the color scheme a little later. So that's all optional, but today we're just going to be doing the sketch, and I'm probably going to have to retitle this video, but here we go. So this is what we started with, which is the rough sketch to get the basic ideas of where everything is. And then after that, we basically almost halved, or less than half, the opacity, which is up here. And then we use this to help us draw the refined sketch of where the hair is, where the ear is, and where the face is, and where everything is. And then we draw on the clothing. And for add some more aesthetic details, I'm going to add a few more extra clothing and fabric lines. So you see that it's not completely flat. And I'm not 100% accurate with fabric folds, so apologies for that, if you can tell that they're not 100% accurate. I'm kind of still learning myself, so I'm not the most highest professional, but I'm decent enough in my own personal terms and my own satisfaction. So yeah, and I'm going to do the fingers, because I didn't remember to do the fingers. Whoops. And with that, I'll be done for today, and we will tomorrow, hopefully, continue later in the evening with the colors. So I'm going to follow finger, and woman fingers, remember, are very fine, very soft, and very gentle. So you have to be very particular with them. I like that. Got little tips here. And like that. And this is a small little nail. Need to do that. And I messed that up. Whoops. So, do, do, nope. Even small things like that can mess up the picture. So, there we go. There's the hands. That's probably as decent as I'm gonna get. And obviously the hands are not going to be this wide. They're actually going to be maybe a little more closed up like this on the inside. But this is just like a basic guideline because I wasn't adding the clothing yet. So yeah, I'm going to move that. I'm going to close this. And we're done with the sketch. And yep. Yeah. So tomorrow we'll be doing the outline and possibly the colors. And maybe the day after I might do the shading or I'll do everything one shot. We ain't going to see because I'm going to be doing this to teach my friend and I'd like her to be there present while I'm doing the colors and everything. So that's it for today. And yep, that should be it. If there's any specific details I need to continue or explain, just leave a comment below or just message me on anything. You can go to my DeviantArt page for more information on commissions and whatever. Alright then, and I'm going to say goodnight because it's 2.40 in the morning and I gotta go to sleep. Have a good day, God bless, and bye!